four steps to perfecting your RDL no matter what implement you're using. Step one, grip the floor with the feet. So really ground those feet and anchor them to the floor. Step two, from your locked out position at the top, once you start to eccentrically load and descend, think about three to four inches down the thigh, you're gonna start to push those hips back. Think as though the hips are being pulled directly back by a string. So not down, they're going backwards. Step three, maintain your soft knee bend throughout the full eccentric loading pattern. Step four, once you are at a range of motion that you're pretty much capped to, so right before your lumbar starts to go into flexion or round, you are then gonna stand back up, thinking about keeping the implement close to the body, really squeezing those glutes at the top and keeping those lats nice and tight so you're really contracting and pulling back before starting the next rep. What's going on guys? Today we're talking about the Romanian deadlift or the RDL. Why do we do it and why is it one of the best exercises in my opinion for building your hamstrings and glutes? Let's dive in. So three major reasons why I think the RDL should be in everyone's program is number one, it is fantastic for strengthening and also teaching the hip hinge. The hip hinge is a fundamental movement pattern that I think literally everybody needs to conquer before they start really loading up the barbell and the deadlift and so forth. So really understanding how to hip hinge is a must for your longevity in the gym. The second reason I love the RDL is for the muscle building purposes of the hamstrings and glutes. This is an awesome exercise that once again targets the hip hinge, but also stretches and loads the hamstrings and then creates a strong hip extension. So you target the hamstring complex and the glutes with the RDL. The third reason I love RDLs is how dynamic they are. If you're a beginner, you can modify the height in which you're performing them to. Work with dumbbells, work with kettlebells. You can use a landmine setup. You can use a barbell if you're trying to get heavy and really try to load a heavier hip hinge. So that being said, with how dynamic the movement is, it can literally be used by almost every level lifter and you can modify the intensity to make it beginner friendly if you need to. And as a bonus benefit, RDLs can have carryover to sport performance for two main reasons, in my opinion. Number one is they will build your hamstrings. The hamstrings are a biarticulate muscle group, meaning they cross the knee joint and the hip joint. So they help with knee flexion and assist in hip extension with the glutes. If we can strengthen the hamstrings in an elongated position, we're gonna build better distal parts of the hamstring, which can have carryover to your sport performance. Another reason RDLs can assist with your sports performance is how they can help you manage your pelvis position and stability. So by managing load in a hip hinged position, we're gonna build the glutes and so forth and all of these intricate muscles that play a role in our pelvis stability and hip stability, which yes, can have carryover in sports because it's gonna help us, one, manage a better center of mass, but two, just be overall stronger when it comes to our hip and leg performance. Hey guys, as always, drop a like, drop a subscribe, Maui has already done so, and he would like you to do so as well. Three of my favorite RDL variations include the barbell RDL, the dumbbell slash kettlebell RDL, and the landmine RDL. And I wanted to make this video and share these variations because I think it's useful as a lifter to pick and choose different variations based on the goals you're doing, and also just the resources you have available. A lot of us don't have gym access right now, so understanding when and how to use each can be useful. So let's first talk about barbell RDL. When do I personally like to use this variation? If I'm training heavier and my goal is really pushing the upper end of my strength of my hip hinge, I'll use the barbell RDL. That is simply just because I can load it heavier. Generally, I don't have dumbbells that are heavy enough to really put a lot of strain and load on my hip hinge, so I'll opt for the barbell RDL. So I'll use this variation between like the four to six, maybe the eight RM range, and I'll go heavier with it because I have the means to. Now with the dumbbell and kettlebell RDL, I'll use these variations for more of our general strength work or higher volume training. So when my goals are pushing more time under tension, I'll add tempos in here. So I'll add a second pause at the bottom and so forth if I don't have very heavy weights. But this variation is great because you have a little bit more free range with what your lats can do. So at the top, when you are hitting your full extension, you can really pull and contract those lats versus in the barbell RDL where that weight's always forward. Yes, you can have lat contraction in both, but barbell and kettlebell are a little bit easier, especially for, I think, beginners and intermediates to wrap their heads around and conquer because they have a little bit more free reign and can focus on their hip hinge without having to worry about managing a barbell in front of them. The landmine RDL. If you have a landmine setup and you're not so great at your hip hinge or if you just wanna really nail higher rep sets, I love the landmine for doing so. Since it's on a fixed movement pattern, so it goes up and down in the fixed landmine setting, 
it's a little bit easier, I think, to prioritize our thought patterns on really conquering and filling out a really strong hip hinge because we don't have to worry so much about the barbell in front of us floating away, trapping those dumbbells and kettlebells in with those lats. So in the landmine variation, it's phenomenal, I think, for anybody who really wants to push higher rep sets and wants to focus on their hip hinge. Now, obviously, you can interchange all of these for different adaptations. That's just how I've learned to like the, that's how I've learned to love to use all three of these. But again, try them out, see how you like them, see which one you prefer, and then modify from there. So try adding in tempos, try playing with different heights and so forth. So you can even pull from a box and so forth. There's so much different variation you can use with the RDL, and that is why it's freaking awesome. That wraps up this video on RDLs, variations, and benefits of using them. If you have any questions about the variations and how you like to program them, or if you just have any comments on RDLs in general, drop them down below. And as a reminder, I have filmed a single leg RDL video and common mistakes, so if you haven't checked that out and you want a slightly more advanced variation for your RDL, boom, it's up there. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.